Do any of you guys remember the early hip-hop duo Criss Cross? Okay, sure, a whole bunch of you probably weren't even born yet when their hit single Jump hit the airwaves back in 1992. But when it did, it propelled these 13-year-old kids with names like Chris Mac Daddy Kelly and Chris Daddy Mac Smith into superstar status. With their trademark extra baggy and backwards fashion sense, these two were helped along the way by none other than Jermaine Dupri, who discovered them while visiting a local Atlanta mall. Millions of records and albums sold would follow, but it wasn't really meant to be. A lengthy hiatus would ultimately turn into something much more permanent when Chris Kelly lost his life overdosing on drugs. Think you know the name of the Criss Cross video game? Then let us know the answer in the comments down below. Otherwise, keep watching our newest episode of Where Are They Now to discover the answer to that question and a whole lot more. The first line of Criss Cross's debut single, Jump, opens with the following sentiment. Don't try to compare us to another bad little fad. Of course, outside of that line being totally quotable, it didn't exactly prove to be true. When a couple of youngsters named Chris Kelly and Chris Smith came together to accomplish their hip-hop dreams, they decided to name themselves Criss Cross. Get it? Because both their names are Chris? Okay, look, it was the early stages of hip-hop and they were only 13 years old at the time, so, you know, all things considered, that's not a bad little bit of branding. And if you consider it, like, you know, we got groups now called Travis Porter, where there's three guys in the group named Travis Porter. You know, like Criss Cross, they, they set the blueprint, man. You know? Good for them, good for them. These two were officially introduced to the music industry back in 1992 by music producer Jermaine Dupri after he discovered them at a Silk Times leather autograph signing at Georgia's famous Greenbrier Mall. And who exactly were they there to see? Well, these girls, apparently. Hey, it's all good if you don't remember Silk Times Leather, they didn't last long, and at the end of the day, their biggest contribution to music may have been inadvertently bringing together Dupree and Criss Cross. I'm telling you, I was standing there in the middle of them all looking at this like, who the f is this? Impressed by the kids' tenacity, Dupree exchanged phone numbers with them on the spot and then spent the next two years grooming them for superstardom. For superstardom. That's, that's what they were being groomed for. Just wanted to be clear about that. Dupree not only wrote their music, he taught them how to rap and dress as well. In fact, it was Dupree who created the trademark Chris Croc look of backwards pants and baseball jerseys. I know this sounds ridiculous now, but like, if you were around for when this was a fad, you probably thought we were gonna do this for the rest of our lives. Like, I, I really did think that we were gonna wear backwards baseball jerseys and basketball jerseys for the rest of our lives. I think Dipset kind of revived it a little bit, you know, wearing the backwards uh, basketball jerseys with the last name on the front, but man, it's another thing that Criss Cross laid the blueprint for. Influential, iconic. Dupree would also try time and time again to land these kids a record deal. After producing a demo for them, he shopped it around the different labels, but most of them turned it down. Eventually, the Columbia imprint Rough House Records decided to take a chance on them after hearing a version of Lil Boys in the Hood. When it came time to record their debut album, Totally Crossed Out, Dupree would take the reins, writing not only all the lyrics, but producing each and every song as well, including the duo's breakout hit, Jump. It's one of the reasons why we do need to hail Jermaine Dupree as one of the greatest producers of all time. He would later admit to having written the lyrics to Jump in the span of just one hour but he would spend a lot more time figuring out the beat. Like many other rap mega hits of the 1990s, Jump samples a number of different popular tracks, with the main instrumental hook being taken from the 1973 funk workout, Funky Worm by Ohio Players. And it would also include elements of the Jackson 5 hit, I Want You Back. Upon its release in February of 92, Jump would take a few months to catch fire. But after the duo performed the track on the hit sketch series in Living Color, the song soared near to the top of the charts, leaping from the number 61 spot to number 12 in the span of only one week. Before long, the track made it to the very top of the Hot 100 Billboard chart, and it would stay there for eight weeks. It would also hit the number one spot in four other countries and the top 10 in four more. A year after its release, Totally Crossed Out was going quadruple platinum, and the Jump single itself had sold more than two million copies. In fact, the song was so incredibly popular that there was even a VHS single that moved over a hundred thousand units. Man, today that baby would be an NFT. Crisscross NFT. Jermaine, you need to you need to get on that. Crossed out means doing the opposite of what is usually done, and you looking at the crossed out style. I mean, Jump turned Crisscross into such a cultural phenomenon that Sega even licensed the video game based on the duo titled Crisscross, Make My Video a widely criticized venture that allowed players to edit their own crisscross music video. Look at these guys breaking the mold again, making customizable video games. I mean, come on, where would we be without crisscross? Ah, 
Shout out to all the Chris Smiths out there. These two kids would spend the biggest summer of their life in 1992 touring with Michael Jackson and appearing alongside him in Jackson's Jam music video. They would then follow up their monumental hit with the moderately successful track, Warm It Up. Unfortunately, their next single, the Goofy Story rap song, I Miss the Bus, failed to impress practically anybody. At this point, Criss Cross had already become old news. It would just take them a little bit longer to figure that out. And I mean, let's be honest here, the Criss Cross era was not built to last. Even with all that hype from Jump, the duo would never see another song reach the top 10 on any chart. A little over a year after the release of their debut album, Criss Cross would drop their sophomore effort, The Bomb. It would take a totally appropriate title, but probably not in the way that these two were hoping for. Rather than explode their career to new heights, The Bomb, well, yeah, it bombed. Sure, it went platinum, and its most successful single, All Right, didn't even make it into the top 15 on the Billboard charts. It would take Criss Cross a further three years to record their next project, Young, Rich, and Dangerous. And while this album would reach gold status and produce the duo's second biggest song of all time, Tonight's the Night, it would also signal the end of the group altogether. In the late 90s, both of the Chris's decided to go on an indefinite hiatus. They had recorded as many as 20 unreleased tracks for their potential fourth studio album, but neither man felt like it was the right time to continue down the path for Criss Cross. Instead, they went their separate ways. Smith decided to go back to school and he studied marketing and business management before forming his own company called One Life Entertainment. Over 10 years later, in January of 2013, these two reunited to celebrate the 20th anniversary of Jermaine Dupri's So So Deaf Recordings label. Better yet, they performed together as well. Little did they know that only a few weeks later, one of them would be gone forever. On May 1st, 2013, Chris Kelly's body was found unresponsive in his Atlanta home. He was later pronounced dead around 5 p.m. at the Atlanta Medical Center. He was only 34 years old. To the world, Chris was Mac Daddy, but to me, he was a son I never had. As much as I think I taught him, he taught me. God has blessed me to be in the presence of so many naturally talented people, and Chris was one. I will always love you, Chris, and I will never let the world forget you. Toxicology reports would show that he had a mixture of drugs in his system. A police report would also state that Kelly's mother had told investigators that her son was using both cocaine and heroin the night before he died. A few months later, the Fulton County Medical Examiner would conclude that yes, Kelly's death was an accidental overdose caused by the combined effects of several substances, including heroin and cocaine, just to name a few. I know, I know Chris is in heaven, but I have a father. And just like that, Criss Cross was gone for good. Since the passing of his best friend, who he's known since the first grade, Chris Smith has continued fleshing out his career as an artist. No longer simply just as a musician, he would launch his own website called Urban Muse to showcase his paintings and other interests like apparel design, film, culture, and yes, of course, music too. And years later, when asked to comment on the loss of Kelly, Smith would tell XXL, ever since that day, my life has never been the same. The world is different for me you start looking at things differently. You kind of just put everything into perspective. You just hold on to the memories though. You just hold on to the memories though. That's what kind of keeps me going. It's what keeps the many fans that still remember Criss Cross going as well. They may have never made a bigger impact than their breakthrough moment, but what a moment it was. All right, guys, my name is Clyde Smith. I sure hope you guys enjoyed this look into the recent history of Criss Cross. Please like and subscribe before you leave and I'll see you guys in another video.